Hi team, this is Chris Abraham from GoMath. Today we're going to work on number 29 on the FTC elementary practice test. There's a great problem to review some core concepts in fractions, decimal, and percents. Doesn't matter if you're preparing to take the FTCs in Florida or if you're preparing to take another teacher certification exam, like for example in Massachusetts, you're preparing to take the MTEL exams, or a teacher certification exam in California and New York. The core concepts are going to be the same. So let's, uh, let's look at this problem here. It reads something like this. The following circle graph shows the results of a survey of 150 students. How many students chose baseball as their favorite sport? And then it gives us this graph. And just to be specific, this is a, a pie chart, a pie graph. Whenever you think of a, a pie graph, a pie chart, pardon me, I want you to think about partial relationships. The whole is 100% of this pie chart. So I guess, a, um, not $100, but a, 100%. So 100% would be all the students. And in terms of the students that like baseball, well, we're just looking at 20% of them. So in terms of this problem, we're trying to figure out what's 20% of that 100%. Now, whenever you see a, a pie graph like this, and you're thinking part to whole relationships, you automatically have to connect, you know, part to whole relationships, right? With anything to do with a part to whole relationship, you know, could be represented as, you know, a fraction, like uh, one half. Or we could turn that fraction into a decimal, 0 0.5, or to a percent. So part to whole, fractions, decimal, percents, they're all connected. All right, so we're gonna have to, you're going to have to go back and make sure you have your skills on finding uh, fractions, decimal, percents, and know, um, know how to solve these types of problems. Now, one way to use fractions, decimal, and percents is to ask yourself, what is 20% of 150? Well, if I wanted to do it this way, I could convert the 20% into a decimal. 0 0.2. And then I could, of is a, another way of saying multiply, 150. So 20% of 150 is the same as uh, 2 tenths times 150. So there I would just have to actually work it out and be very careful with my decimal multiplication. I always got to remind myself, if I move it over to the right and make this a 2 and then multiply it out, that would be 2 times 0 is 0, times the 5 is a 1, so I, I mean 0 carry the 10, carry the 1. 2 times 1 is 2 plus the 1 is 3. It's not 300 now, i got to move it back to the left, one space. So 2 tenths of 150 or 20% 20 of 150 is actually 30. Well, what's another way of thinking about this? Well, I could have started with, you know, my 20% of 150 and been like, oh, I know 20% is one-fifth. So what's one-fifth of 150? Well, one-fifth, again, it's I'm doing a fraction now times, times because of is multiply, times 150. And I got to remember, hey, I can, when, I, when I'm multiplying a fraction times a whole number, I turn the whole number into a fraction. Well, when I'm multiplying out fractions like this, I can cross-reduce, right? They're connected by multiplication, so I could divide by 5 here, and I could divide by 5 here. I'm going to get 30 on the top and 1 on the bottom. So 1 fifth of 150, again, is 30. Ah, sounds cool. Here's another way of solving it. I always have multiple ways. Let's say I'm thinking 20%. It's 20 out of 100 percent of the students, you know, like baseball. Well, I've got 150 students. How many students here, uh, how many, what's the equivalent fraction? I just created a proportion. 20 out of 100, and I know that x out of 150 are the same. Well, I could do, I could solve this a whole bunch of different ways. One way is I could do something called cross multiplication, where I'm going to be multiplying the numerators, the numerator here and the denominator and the x and the 150 here. So I would get 100x is equal to 20 
times 150. And that would also, another way of writing this is 3,000 is equal to 100x. And then I divide by 100, divide by 100. This cancels out into 30. And what's left over here is x. x equals 30 again. All right. Why did I go about so many ways of solving this problem? Because this is one of your core fractions, decimal percent type of problems. You should be very comfortable with all the different ways of finding out 20% of 150. Now I demonstrated three ways. Make sure you're comfortable with figuring, using you know, um, those three ways to solve for 20% 20 20 of 150, okay? Don't just stick with one way. Learn at least two. Try and get all three ways. All right, team, this is Chris Abraham from Go Math. I hope you found this video helpful. It's a great problem to review um, core concepts in fractions, decimal, and percents. Have a great day, team. All right, bye-bye. Hi, team. I want to encourage all teachers that need some extra help on the math to check out one of the Go Math workshops. We're holding them in Massachusetts and in Florida to help teachers uh, get ready for the teacher certification exams. Check it out. I'm sure you'll find it very helpful.